Today we have an interesting product. This is the Melee Quieter 4C Mini PC. Now, if you're watching this video on YouTube, you should see a paid promotion annotation in the top left. So before we get started, I should clarify that this product was sent to me for free, and I will include the manufacturer's website as well as Amazon links in the video description. However, these are not affiliate links, so I don't earn a commission on any sales. I also haven't been paid to say anything nice, so I aim to be as fair and honest as possible. With that said, let's get unboxing. As you can probably make out from the size of the box, this is a very small PC, certainly the smallest one I've ever looked at. It's shorter than my phone, albeit a bit thicker. The model I have contains an Intel N150 processor, 16GB of RAM, and a 512GB SSD, so it's very similar to the DreamQuest Pro Plus I reviewed not too long ago. Except here we have DDR5 RAM instead of DDR4, and we have an NVMe SSD instead of M2 SATA, although I believe the lower end models use eMMC by default. And for anyone curious, here are the dimensions. When we open the box, we're greeted with a quick start guide, a little diagram that shows how heat is dissipated, and of course the PC itself, in an all-metal chassis that feels very premium. On the front we have a power button. On the right we have three USB Type-A ports, with two of them being USB 3.0. And on the rear we have two HDMI 2.0 ports, a gigabit Ethernet port, a 3.5mm audio jack, and we have two USB-C ports. One of them is just for 12 volts DC power, but the other one supports data and alt mode, meaning you can supply power and display with just one cable, which is incredibly useful and reduces cable clutter. In the box we also have a power cable and a mounting kit if you want to mount this on the back of a display. But before we have a look at the product, let's have a look at the pricing at the time of recording, and this is where things get a bit confusing. On Amazon US, it is $195.45 if you're an Amazon Prime member, or $229.99 if you're not a Prime member, but that's for the N100 variant. When converted to my local currency, I think it's very reasonable. On Amazon UK, it is $249.99 for the N100 variant, and $289.99 for the N150 variant, which I think is a little bit pricey. Bear in mind both variants have a set of configurations for RAM and storage. Amazon Germany only has the N100 variant, Amazon France only has the N150 variant, and Amazon Japan doesn't have this particular model. If you're not based in any of these countries, prefer not to use Amazon, or the model you want isn't available on Amazon in your region, these PCs are also available on AliExpress, where prices are cheaper, but you might have to wait a bit longer for shipping. So I set the PC up and turned it on, where I was taken to the not so glorious Windows 11 out of box experience. I would suggest setting up the PC without internet, otherwise you'll be forced to sit through a load of updates. I also dual booted the PC with Linux, but we'll get into that in a moment. This copy of Windows is fully activated, and to be more specific, this is Windows 11 Pro. Prior to making this video, I was given a document with test results, and the first benchmark they did was Cinebench R23. They carried out the test six times on six different PCs, so I calculated the mean average for the multi-core score, which was 2073 rounded down. However, they only carried out the single core test once, and their result was 826. I decided to test Cinebench R23 myself, and my results were a fair bit lower. The first time round I got 591 points for the single core test, and 1295 for the multi-core. To give the benefit of the doubt, I ran the test again, and the second time I got 670 for the single core, and 1394 for the multi-core. My results are similar to the results someone else got. I then tested the SSD using Crystal Disk Mark, where I got 3470 megabytes per second for the read speed, and 3059 megabytes per second for the write speed. Another benchmark was Geekbench 6, 
In their testing, they got 1,172 for the single core test and 2,445 for the multi core. My results were fairly similar, with 1,130 for the single core and 2,332 for the multi core. I then tested the Wi Fi speed with speedtest.net, where I got 102.38 megabits per second for the download speed and 29.03 megabits per second for the upload speed, and 6 milliseconds for ping. This is what I would expect for my network. I did the temperature test on both Windows and Linux. On Windows using hardware monitor, I averaged around 56 degrees Celsius at idle, going as low as 54 degrees Celsius, and around 81 degrees Celsius under load with a high of 84. On Linux using sensors, I averaged 49 degrees Celsius at idle, going as low as 39 degrees Celsius. Under load, it averaged around 63, with a high of 72. I also did a power test. At idle, we were drawing less than 10 watts, source of bouncing between 3.9 and 4.9 watts. Under load, we were averaging around 14 watts, so you certainly can't fault the efficiency. Now, if you're like me, you're probably less interested in synthetic benchmarks and more interested in real-world performance. I started by playing a 4K YouTube video. This video was 2 minutes and 6 seconds long, and out of 7,585 frames, we only dropped 2 at the very beginning. So for things like web browsing, media playback, and office applications, this thing has no problems. I personally think this is the kind of thing these mini PCs are made for. As mentioned earlier, I installed Linux. To be more specific, I installed Kubuntu 24.10, the same distro I ran on the DreamQuest Pro Plus. For a just works everyday Linux distro, I prefer Linux Mint. But since the N150 is fairly new, you have to use kernel 6.9 or newer in order for the onboard GPU to work correctly. While this computer is not designed for gaming, you can certainly do some light gaming whether it's indie games like Deltarune, older games like Trackmania, FOSS games like Xenotic, or emulators, this PC can handle it. And of course, you can't forget Minecraft. The most intensive game I tested was Euro Truck Simulator, which ran quite well at 1080p low. But obviously, you're not going to be playing Cyberpunk or Warzone. I then decided to take a look under the hood, and as you can tell, there's not much to see. The CPU and RAM are soldered, and therefore non-upgradable. The SSD can be replaced, but due to the size limit, you can only fit one SSD. So what are my final thoughts on this PC? Overall, I think it's a solid and versatile machine that suits a lot of use cases. Not so much because of raw performance, but because of other qualities. Due to the low power consumption, it's a good option for things like basic server usage or an embedded device that you intend on running for long periods of time, possibly 24-7. Due to alt mode and decent multimedia performance, it could work well for things like digital signage or connecting to a television. Since the computer has no fans, it makes zero noise, so it's useful for things like recording audio, as I'm doing right now. It's also suitable for noise-sensitive environments like offices and libraries. And of course, the size is very versatile. This computer is advertised as being good for astrophotography. Now, I'm not an astrophotographer, so I don't know what makes a computer good for it. But I assume it's good because it has enough CPU and RAM to handle image processing. It can accommodate fast SSDs with large capacities for raw files while the small size allows it to be mounted to a telescope. That's just what I assume makes it good for astrophotography. However, this computer is not for everyone. It's not upgradable, and it's not ideal for tasks like gaming or video editing. You can obviously play lighter games, and you could probably do some light video editing in a program like Caden Live, but you'd get much better priced performance upgrading a used PC so the selling point is very much the size and versatility. I mean, this computer literally fits in my pocket, so it's very small, even by mini PC standards, and it's not far off some SBCs. That's it for today's video, and until next time, cheerio.